Later, the two engines met Gordon and James and told them about Cranky. Cranes are airy-fairy things. They need a lot of attention, like me, in fact, said Gordon. Cranky and the engines were trapped at the docks. We're sure to be safe in this shed, said Duck. But he was wrong. Help! Called the engines from inside the shed and clearing the wreckage. At last, all the engines were free. Oh, thank you, said Gordon. What would I have done without you? But I never thought it would be by a couple of b b Cranky was about to say bugs, but he quickly corrected. It was a busy time at the docks. All the engines were working hard. He told the other, and the engines now work even harder to make sure they never will. Gordon was feeling grumpy. Because I'm a big blue engine and I know everything. I shall complain whenever I want. You're just a small red engine with ideas above your station. Any what? But Gordon was still grumpy. One day I'll show you just what a big engine can really do. Not speak to silly little green engines for a start, replied Gordon. Then he puffed away. Later that day, Sir Topham Hatt came to see him as to test our new station. Why can't Henry do it? He likes idling in stations. So Gordon did. But he was still unhappy, and he grew sick too. I just can't get up to speed, he moaned. It's time for your visit to the works. Your pipes are clogged, said the fireman. At last, they approached the new station. In front of him was a blank wall and huge buffers. What a boring view. Important engines like me should have a panoramic view, where I can see people and people can see me. And he wished angrily. Now you can really enjoy your run, as long as your pipes will let you, said his driver. Come on, come on! I can go faster than this, huffed Gordon. Sick me? Never! But Gordon began to feel more and more feeble. And soon, he came to a complete stop. What happened? His driver and fireman inspect. Now you really will have to go to the works. Gordon was still fuming when James arrived to collect his coaches. You got too puffed up in your boiler, so it serves you right. When Gordon returned from the works a few days later, he was still boasting. I am the finest engine on the island of Sodor. Probably the finest in the world. Then there was trouble. As Gordon approached the new station, neither the driver nor fireman could apply his brakes. Something had jammed. The driver reduced steam, but Gordon was still going too fast. Help me, please. Well, Gordon, said Sir Topham Hatt. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. When Gordon was repaired again, he took Sir Topham Hatt to the new station for its second official opening. Arrived safely, and everyone clapped and cheered as he pulled in. Your panoramic view is here to stay. Gordon heartily agreed. But the engines were too busy arguing to notice Thomas. James was talking loudest of all. Rubbish, huffed Henry. We're all the pride of the line. Early one morning, Gordon's fire would not light. I don't know what's wrong, sighed the fire lighter. There must be gremlins about. Can we find one? Sir Topham Hatt had heard everything, he said. I am expecting a VIP. Yes, sir, they all said. As long as the gremlins let us. The ones in Gordon's fire, sir. That's why he's not ready yet. Gordon, you are to pull the special coach for my special visitor. Gordon was proud and pleased. He was waiting for his special coach when Percy puffed in with some freight cars. What's the matter, Gordon? You're late. Driver says there's gremlins in the turntable. 
They must be everywhere, squeaked Percy, and Gordon puffed away with the special coach. He was soon working hard to make up for lost time. After he arrived at the station, Sir Topham Hatt became concerned. Ha! Huh, huffed Gordon. Thomas isn't really useful if he's late. But it wasn't long before Thomas arrived. I'm sorry. Ha! Huh, puffed Gordon. Thomas is just a lazy little engine. Sir Topham Hatt is expecting me to arrive on time. We're late because of Thomas. Gordon's driver decided to make up for lost time. Then there was trouble. I think we'd better slow down. This is an old line and could make things uncomfortable for the VIP. Gordon was very relieved to reach his final destination, where Thomas was waiting to collect Sir Topham Hatt and his special visitor. He blew an extra long whistle. This frightened the visitors. Percy was still fuming when he met Thomas. It's George. He makes me feel down. Percy told Gordon all about George. Huh, snorted Gordon. You're just a small engine. That's why he's rude to you. He wouldn't dare cause me any trouble. I'm the greatest. Just watch me fly by. He whistled long and loud as he approached the station. Suddenly, he saw a freight car on the line ahead. Get out of my way! But the freight car wouldn't move until Gordon forced it. Gordon was worried that Sir Topham Hatt would be cross. He was, but not with Gordon. Whoever caused this disturbance will have me to answer to. There is to be a festival of flowers awarded to the winner. Engines were excited. That night, all the engines laughed at him. And then Gordon thundered by. You look glum, little Percy, said Gordon. Despicable, said Gordon. Gordon was the first to see Harold. Harold thinks he can go faster than me. I'll show him. That evening, the engines talked about the situation. Harold wants to get rid of us, said Gordon. He doesn't need tunnels. Counting sheep, pa, snorted Gordon. He's counting how many engines he can get rid of. He'll see how useful I am tomorrow. The next day, Gordon was traveling to collect his train. We'll show that whirly bird just how fast you can go, Gordon, said his driver. But because they were watching Harold, they missed a signal and went on to the wrong line. Gordon was traveling to try. His driver reduced steam and braked hard, but it was too late. Later, Thomas pulled Gordon clear with the breakdown train. Sir Topham Hatt spoke severely to Gordon's driver. Harold isn't spying on them. He decided to talk to Oliver, the great western engine. Backwards, Mr. Oliver. I have forward thinking. You can't be a leader without a train to follow you. You don't have a train, Gordon said. Oliver wanted to help. You're a very useful brake van, Toad. You help me brake, and you keep my freight cars in order when we go downhill. There ahead was Gordon. Change the points just in time. When Gordon puffed by with his machine. Hey, look out! There's snow about! And wished loudly. Oh, no. Help! cried Gordon. Do the same, chuckled Thomas. Pa! moaned Gordon from within, and then fell as silent as the snow. Special universe. By the invitation of Sir Topham Hatt, of course. Five, six, seven. Eight. Who do we appreciate? Practicing your numbers, Gordon. That's a good engine. I'm counting how many seconds late you are. <laughs> what does that sign say? And right on time. <laughs> Signed, Head of the Railway, Sir Topham Hatt.
But you weren't on time, little Tom. You're being bossy, Gordon. <laughs> now, please excuse me. Oh, I think we can take care of ourselves. Get out of my way! Oh, 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 I have oh, unfinished oh, oh, business oh, here. I've got diesel tens back. Oh. Devious deeds and oh. brutal strength. Yeah. Maybe we do need Mr. Conductor here, after all. Hmm? On time. James is right, little Thomas. <laughs> Collecting Mr. Conductor is an important job. Hmm? Important is big. James is a big engine, hmm? <laughs> you, Thomas, are small. Small, 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 teeny, weeny, weeny. And I, I'm a big blue engine who knows everything. <laughs> Bossy sprockets. All that steam has gone to your funnel. Diesel, no, no. no. Oh. Engine, you won't find her here. Mild, you steamers. It's a sunny day. Nasty fumes from dingy diesel. <laughs> what, even an engine as big as me? Yes, Gordon, even you. Now I'm going to look for Mr. Mr. All the engines on the island of Sodor love their work, but sometimes there is too much work. Seeing new arrivals onto the island of Sodor, Harvey could hear the other engines talking about him. Surely Sir Topham Hat won't let him pull coaches, sniffed Gordon. Harvey heard the engines talking again. This time it was different. Well done, Harvey, said Gordon. All the engines agreed. Welcome to the Sodor Railway, they call it. Brendam Docks is one of the busiest dockyards on all the island of Sodor. The mail run is done. That's what friends are for. The next day, Harold's engine was fixed and he was flying again. That night at the sheds, Sir Topham Hatt had something special to show the engines. It was very large and strange looking. Too loud, huffed James. Sounds like a tugboat to me, grumbled Gordon. The next morning, Sir Topham had arrived. That night, Douglas's driver, I've nothing to be sorry for, he said, and steamed away in a huff. Yes, sir, puffed the engines, but they weren't happy. Trucks are no one's friends, huffed Gordon. He backed up to the trucks and <whistles> then Henry pulled away as easy as pie. Look forward to Halloween. They love Sir Topham Hatt's fireworks. They also love Edward's spooky stories. Ooh, ah, spooky, the engine said, all shivering a little. Later, Sir Topham Hatt arrived. One evening, Sir Topham Hatt came to the sheds. Gordon likes pulling the express said Sir Topham Hatt. Yes, sir, said James. That evening, Sir Topham Hatt came to the sheds, speaking to the other engines. And all the engines whistled more important than Gordon. Watch out, Gordon wished. You'll get my paint all sooty. Of course not, Gordon huffed importantly. Express engines don't pull freight cars. It wouldn't be dignified. Dignified, Gordon corrected. It means, it means that someone's too big for his buffers. Pa, said Gordon, and he puffed away. Sir Topham Hatt came to the sheds. He was in a great hurry. You too, Gordon. Freight cars, huffed Gordon. He could not believe what he had heard. Gordon wasn't happy to be pulling freight cars. He waited impatiently while they were shunted into place. Hurry up, hurry up, chuffed Gordon crossly. If I must pull freight cars, then I'll show Salty how an express engine pulls freight cars, Gordon Hupp. But Gordon ignored Salty. Gordon raced along with his heavy load. Now this is how you pull freight cars, he puffed. 
Gordon rattle through the junction. That's strange. I'm on the branch line. It was too late. Gordon had already raced into the distance. But Gordon ignored the signs. I'm an express engine. I don't go slow, he said. And he went even faster. The branch line couldn't take his weight, and the rails buckled. Oh, help! And into a field. But poor Gordon felt very undignified. What will Sir Topham Hatt say? He found out soon enough. But you wanted to show Salty a thing or two, and you've certainly done that. Sorry, sir, said Gordon, and he let out a sad whoosh of steam. Gordon was soon repaired and back at the docks ready for work, unhappy with himself. Salty, sorry he teased you, puffed James. And I'm sorry I was too big for my buffers, chuffed Gordon. Even Gordon. Washdowns are important to Percy. But Sir Topham Hatt had bad news. I am important, Gordon sniffed. I'm an express engine. Back at the sheds, everyone thought it was very funny. Disgraceful, said Gordon pompously. Island of Sodor loved the summer. Alicia Bati, the famous singer, was coming to the island of Sodor. She's a coloratura, said Gordon, important. It means she can sing high notes very, very loud. Nonsense, I'm the most important, huffed Gordon. Well, one thing's for sure, said Gordon. He won't choose dirty Percy. And he wished away. But the next day, Sir Topham Hatt didn't choose Gordon. Move aside, dirty Percy. But I need a washdown, wailed Percy. My passengers will laugh at me. I can't wait, grumped Percy. I'm a guaranteed connection, and he chuffed away. Definitely a coloratura, said Gordon. But he's filthy, Gordon huffed snootily. Later, Thomas saw Percy at the washdown. I'm sorry I called you dirty Percy, said Thomas. You go first. That night was Alicia Body's concert. Her voice carried across half the island. Gordon is a very proud steam engine. He's the fastest engine on the island of Sodor, along his line with the wind blowing across his funnel. You've broken the record again, said his driver. I'm the fastest, boasted Gordon. But not all the engines were impressed. You slow engines will never understand, snorted Gordon, because you'll never go as fast as me. What's a jet engine? asked Percy. Gordon had no idea that Thomas was racing along the main line. I am the fastest, said Gordon proudly. Bye, Gordon. Bye, Gordon. Gordon could not believe what he had seen. Sorry for overtaking you back there, Gordon, teased Thomas. Overtake me? I didn't notice, Gordon huffed. Yes, I am the fastest, puffed Thomas. Gordon is a very good express. Edward is a useless old steam pot, Gordon sniffed. He should be retired. And not a moment too soon, said Gordon. And the other big engines agreed with him. When the other engines heard Duck was going to help them, they were pleased. It makes no difference to me, said Gordon pompously. I don't need a back engine. And he wished away. If I stop on this hill, I'll never get started again, he said crossly. And he buffered up to Duck. Gordon tried to set off again, but his wheels spun and spun. It's no use. We need a back engine, said the driver. I'll send for Edward. 
Gordon was cross. Station. Gordon was embarrassed. You have said rude things about Edward. Gordon felt very ashamed. The next morning, Gordon apologized. Thank you for helping me, Edward, puffed Gordon. You really are a useful engine. Sir Topham Hatt's plan had worked. There was no more talk about Edward retiring. Because I'm a big blue engine and I know everything, I shall complain whenever I want. 